Hello everybody, I hope you're all keeping well. Um, Mark here again, sorry I'm a little bit late, actually I'm about eight minutes late, I do apologise, I said two o'clock. But um, I had a quick practice and I was running a bit late. So we're going to do another painting today um, and I've decided to do something that's a little bit easier. It's something that children could easily manage um, and, and, and adults as well. Remember sometimes children are actually, uh, have got more skills than adults at art. Um, and this is a good one to come together on and actually sit down and do together if you can. Um, the usual paints, gouache, acrylics if you've got them, otherwise just gouache. Um, some pastels and chalks and some um, children's artist colouring pencils are fine. And we're going to do a, a, an urban scene today. It's going to be like a, a, it's a landscape but done portrait. And it's going to be um, a sunset, a really lovely rich red sunset. And oranges and yellows and all that kind of stuff and then we're going to put over the top some houses um, chimney pots some smoke uh, coming out the chimneys and, and some and some um, tv aerials and some birds flying some trees and we're going to pick out elements of light on those little bits and pieces so that we're just capturing a little bit of light on there so it looks dark it's that sort of sunset where the sun's gone but it's still shining and glowing that lovely sunset in the sky, those deep cherry reds and all that. But there's still a little bit of light dotted about on things, like on brick walls and on the side of a tree. You've still got that kind of light. It's not pitch black yet. Um, and we'll do some lit windows as well in the walls, which gives it that lovely cosy feeling that people are indoors and getting up to uh, watching TV and things like that and uh, self-isolating, things like that. <laughs> right, this is what we're going to do. So you can see... It's really, really um, warm and cosy looking. Some might say a little bit scary, a little bit creepy if he was walking down that alleyway there. Things like that. So it, it, it's, it conjures up all sorts of things really. But the first thing we have to do with a painting like this, we'll just paint the sky and it will come all the way down through. Um, I painted it all the way through the paper. Then we dry it with a hairdryer. Okay, so if you're a very young child and your mum and dad are there, obviously they would be, just get the hairdryer out and let them do it for you in case it gets hot. You never hold it too close. But there is a bit of hair drying on this one to do. And, and then we'll start putting in the, uh, the buildings. And the buildings are very simply done, just, just an outside edge. And then we colour it all in black and brown. And then we'll pick out, once we've dried it again, we'll pick out little bits of light with an orange colouring pencil. It looks like a lot more drawing was done in that to, uh, from the off, but it wasn't. There was only a little bit done. And no drawing at the very first stage. So let's get on with it. Right, so first of all, the colours you'll need are these. So we're going to use red, nice squirt of red, like that. Not too much, about that much. These are uh, side plates, uh, so you get the idea how big the, the lump is. Now I've got some red acrylic. This is a large one because I run, obviously run art clubs, but I've got some large pots, but you should, if you have got some red acrylic, just use that. You don't have to. Um, the red acrylic is quite good because it's just a bit stronger in colour and just gives you a little bit more depth. But you can still achieve this painting with just gouache paints, it's fine. Um, to darken our red, I always use, in this sort of a painting, some blue. So we'll have some blue going in as well. Um, and obviously we're going to need some lighter reds, in other words, or oranges going into yellows. We'll have a little bit of um, white gouache as well. That's to lighten up some other areas but without being too um, light. It just helps to lighten up some areas. And then we're ready to go, I think. Has it got everything there? Yes, we have. So, a reasonable size brush. You could use one about that big if you've got one. Or the biggest brush you've got in your artist's collection. Like that. Something like that. I'm going to use this one. It's slightly wider. All right, but it's not very thick but it is wide and that's the brush I'm going to use. Um, so first of all, we'll just dampen the brush a little bit and then dot, just dot it into some blue paper like that. And then take some of the, we'll go with the red first, so a good helping of red, like that. And if you've got the acrylic red, now's the time to put some in there as well. Like that. Just mix that around a bit. Then take some of that and put it over there. Like that, and you can always add a bit more red gouache to it as well. Then take some blue and add it gently, carefully, slowly, like that. Now that's giving me 
give the colour straight away there actually. But if you add too much, it will look too, uh, it will start to look a bit browny red, and you don't want that. So that's quite a, a dark red. I'm going to put a little bit of acrylic in mine. Uh, not too wet with a brush. Now I'm going to start painting this corner now. Sometimes when I do a sunset, uh, you just paint down and then change and then change. You keep getting lighter and lighter and lighter. That's fine, but sometimes you want to just get, capture some other things going on and make it a little bit more um, interesting. Okay? There's a bit of blending to be done. So first of all, we're going to go in with a dark red. So in this corner, I'm going to sweep it up there like that. Obviously, you'll be working flat. Oops. I just washed that brush out, it's got quite a lot of water in the metal part. But it'll be alright, I'll fix it. Um, so these deep reds coming through like that. And I'm going at a slight angle. See that? Just taking some paint on there like that, I'm brushing it right through and just doing that kind of thing. Obviously yours won't be exactly the same as mine, but I'm not worried about that. Just let the thing flow. Now, we've got that dark red. It's not dark enough. I think I had some water in the metal part of there and it's run down, it's thinned my paint down. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to the, uh, to the red. So I'll get a deeper red, a little bit of acrylic going in and more red gouache. And that's what I'm trying to get, a real deep red. And I'm gonna put that up there now. There we go, so see, that's what I was trying to achieve, that darker color there. And that's gonna come through a little bit with this other red. Now I'm going to start to just add reds on its own. Okay, like this. Put that in. So as you come down, it's going to start to get lighter. Wash the brush out a little bit, because you don't want it to be too dark further down. And squeeze out the water. I'm just going to clear up the floor a bit, because I've got a lot of paint on the floor down. Right, next job, I'm going to start to add orange into that red, into that initial red there, but the one that we didn't darken. Orange goes in, like so. So you've got a nice orangey, rich orangey red, and that's going to go in there. Like that. Get all the way out to the edge, sometimes you have to scrub a little bit. Right, the paper will ripple. Tiny bit, but don't worry, it goes flat again as it dries out. Now, orange on its own, I'm going to put in. I'm just bring that into this, the colour above as well. So, I'm putting it on, but I'm introducing it into the colour that I put on before. So, you get this gradual blend. Like that. and I, that's where I had that splash earlier, so I'm just going to just scrub that a little bit. Take some of that last colour and put it in. Now bring that in. Like that. And anything else that's left on the brush is obviously going into it as well. But that's fine. Like that. And now I'll get that, that bit there's a bit pink. I'm just going to that a little bit there. Now I'm going to do some more yellow on its own now, and it will blend with, with that last colour because that's still obviously down. There it goes, that goes in. Rub it through. It's not perfectly um, yellow because I've been cleaning the brush each time, but that's all right, that will add to it. Smoothing out as I go. Last little bit of yellow going in there. Really. Sometimes you've got to really rub at it. Like that. Now I'm going to dry it a little bit with my hair dryer. So if you've got one there, you want to rub.
to the point where thing we're going to do is we'll start marking out where these houses are going to go um, and for that you could use a pencil, a normal, a normal drawing pencil, you could use a pastel so you can just about see the shape of it or in this case I'm going to use a black pencil so you can sort of see it clearer. Now it's fiddly because I actually prefer to do things like this flat but obviously I can't so you can see it but I'm going to look at the one I did about half an hour before this one started and start to put in these shapes. So I'm going to come down a little bit lower for this because I felt that I lost some of the, uh, the lighter tones on my first one. So I'm going to just come down a little bit lower. And there's a roof coming in from the side, like that. Coming back in. And then the wall coming down through there, like that. So we've got the side of the house there. That will get painted black and then we'll start to pick out some of the, um, the details of that house. So while I'm on this one, I'm going to put a chimney on it and that comes out the side nice and straight and then you could put that little bit of brickwork edging on there and then we'll put a chimney pot on it and maybe another one just slightly behind like that. Right, so we've got a chimney on that one, lovely. And down here I'm going to start to do, a, I'm going to leave a gap and then I'm going to put another house in. I don't know if I did it, yeah, I did it smaller. That was a bit further back. And there's the roof, and that comes along like that. Bearing in mind this is just a silhouette, so we're only concentrating on the, um, the outside edge of all the houses. And there might be another one in front of this, so there's another roof sticking up there. I might do this one like that, actually, so you'll see the end of a house like that. Somewhere over there. And then another house, this is a bit different to the one I've just done. And then another house somewhere over there at the side. And that would be another chimney there. And another chimney there. And don't forget, if I'm going too fast, it's not a problem because you can easily pause this after you've watched it. Let's put another chimney there. Uh, and down here, there will be a wall, like that, we'll imagine a wall there, and then over in the distance, back over here, the other side of the road, there's obviously a house, another one further back, right over the other side there, and we'll put a little chimney on that one as well, so we've got chimney pots, we want it to look quite urban, um, and then tree up here later on. We'll put all the uh, TV aerials on with, with pencil later. We'll do that in a bit because the first, I, wanna, I was waiting for that to dry, that's why I went to that. That's nice and dry now because I want to put some pastel on there to pick out some nice colours. So we're going to go with some pastels and for this you're going to be using, what could we use? We could use a nice orange. I'll get a red, I forgot to get the red out. Nice deep red. Um, and I'm going to go with a dark blue as well, just to put some up there. I might put some up there. Okay, so here's my red and an orange. So sometimes you get those lovely streaks, don't you? And sometimes you get darker streaks as well, where you've got clouds in the sky, wispy clouds, <coughs> and they're actually silhouetting against the background. Let's try this. 
So we've got some red through here, first of all. I don't just do a straight line, make it interesting as it gets all sort of, there's some wispy clouds in there, just picking up on some light. really let yourself go with this and, and try things out and experiment with colour. Um, we see so many different sunsets, don't we, with all sorts of colour. You can do all kinds of things. This is uh, a dark blue. going on in it, you're just sort of letting things evolve and happen. Um, I've got this sort of a mustardy yellow here as well, I'm going to just pick up some bits and pieces. I think you just done, I only chose my thumb, it was a little cleaner than that thing. Like that. You know when you've still got that band of blue and then you get that orangey reds coming into it. Sometimes you look close and you see, you'll sort of see a greenish tinge to the sky. And that's when that happens. Sometimes you do get those green tinges in the skies. Just drop that a bit more there. Now, all those rooftops and bits and pieces we're now going to colour in. So we're going to just mix up. Now I've got that there, haven't I? I've got that deep red which I've used at the top underneath for some of that pastel and I'm going to mix that with um, some black acrylic you could use black ash. I'm going to use some black acrylic just down on the side of my plate there and I'm also going to use some brown I'm going to put it over here and take it from there so nice helping of brown going in there actually this isn't the brush I'm going to use I'm going to use a smaller one but I'm just using it for the mixing and then the black goes in Okay, so we're not jet black, we're a, we're a warm black, I would call it. So almost brown, but not quite black. That's nice and warm. Scrape out what you've got in the brush here. Put that there. Lay a bit more black. You could use black dull ash as well, that's fine. Put that one away. This is the size brush I'm going to use, just wet it down. That one there will be good, because it's not too big. And it's going to help um, go around all the 
these shapes. So the first thing we'll do, we'll come down there, like that, and just cover it in. You can be quite quick with it, but you've got to be careful around your edges. Like this. There's quite a bit to cover in, but you can always fast forward through this bit if you want to. Later on, but you can't now if you're watching, of course, because I'm doing it live. I'm going to change that, I'm going to, I'm going to bring that through, actually, I'm going to pretend that was the, the house there. Um, you can do that to yours if you want or not. But as long as you've got rooftop shapes, it doesn't matter, it really doesn't. As long as you've got things going on that look like rooftops, your, your little town can be different to my one. You can change it and put trees in different places. This is just to give you a guide, alright, so you can sort of um, feed off of this, but use your own ideas. I'm going to bring that through there, down there. Let it off. It's funny because I was watching Bob Ross the other day. If anybody knows Bob Ross, there was one on the other night and I was watching it. And um, it's made me laugh because the way he says, just let your little world evolve. You know, <laughs> and it's kind of like that. So you can do your own little thing. And um, although you're following him, or me, you can still do your own thing a little bit, and that's the beauty of these kind of paintings. Um, I'm just dragging more brown and black into that because I didn't mix up enough, because it does, there is quite a lot to do. And that just gets filled in there. Like that, until you're fully filled in. I hope you've protected your table a little bit. Alright, and then this the last bit here. To the chimney pot safely without leaning on lots of wet paint, it might be worth just drying this off at this stage. So I'm going to give it a blast with the old hairdryer again. It doesn't matter if that's a bit patchy. Because it just feels like there's light on it, that's all it does. It's just a little bit of light falling on things differently, and that adds to it. So don't worry if that's a bit patchy. We're going to be doing stuff with it with pastel in it, anyway. and lots of different things but first of all we have to paint in the chimney pots now if you've got if you've got a square brush and when I say a square it's got a flat end it hasn't got a point on it this can work in your favour for these next steps because if you mix your paint up it's still the black and the brown I'm using you can use the end of that to make your chimney pots look I'm going to take this chimney pot a bit higher you can sort of just drag down, like that, like that. Just let the brush do the work for you, okay? Then to put the little neck on the chimney, just go across like that, down. Just to make it a bit thicker, that's it, there. All right? Then to put the pots on, the little pots that you get on chimneys, you just take the brush again. I've come around this side because it's easier for me and just put the pots on like that and then you've got another one slightly behind so you don't see the gap between like that so you've got a little chimney pot there and it's a bit crooked but 
sometimes they are. <laughs> and then we've got this little one. Down in. This little one. So this one I'm going to do from the side so it's narrower. Like that. And then this bigger one. And we'll start with the collar part of it. And then just drag down. Turn the brush around because it's got more paint on the inside. And then drag down there. And then put the pots on. Careful not to lean in any of the ones you've done, otherwise you'll have black splodges in the sky. We don't want that. Although saying that, if you do have one, you might be able to uh, change it into a bird or something later on. So there's our two, two tuning pots on that one. Let's go a little bit wider there. Right. Okay, so we've got a few chimneys dotted about. I'm going to put another one there actually, just quickly. That's fine, I like that. Now, next thing, we're gonna bring a tree up here. So, same color, this time we're just gonna stipple it in. Now, it, don't fill it right in, leave some gaps. So you can start off quite dark in the center of the tree, but as you come up, just leave some gaps. And all I'm doing is just dabbing the tip of the same size brush, that square one. Not too hard, I'm not banging it down so it hits the metal. It's just the tip of the brush, Coming out like this, behind that chimney slightly, leaving some gaps within the tree because you can see light through trees. You don't, they don't block all the leaves, don't block out everything. There we go. Just dab it on. Get, get a nice shape. This is just the side of the tree. It's probably this big. So you're only seeing just the side of it, because we've only got a certain amount of space in, for our view, like that. And we can put pastels in there and everything, but it's important that the, the edges are left soft and little tiny leaves can be seen, silhouetted against the background sky. Too, too, too straight and perfect would make it look like a balloon. So we don't want that, we just want that soft edge. Okay, like that. Now we're gonna do some um, TV aerials. Now I'm using a black um, pencil for this. So a black pencil, it wants to be sharpened. Uh, I'm sharpen this on there. Yeah, just give it a quick sharpen. So a black pencil, you could do this with paint if you want. Um, a thin brush, obviously, nice thin brush, but for quickness and to help you, I'm going to show you with uh, a black pencil. So this one, a TV aerial first of all is a black line coming away from the chimney, like that. Then it's going to go that way. And I'm going to put a little end on it, thing, like that, and then I'm going to do some bars on it. Like that. Okay, so there's a TV aerial, like that. I'm going to put another one on this house. facing the same way as well, which you, you do get that most of the time because obviously they're taking a signal from one place. So here's another one on that end house over there, much smaller because it's further away, like that. And then this one, I shall do a bit bigger. Got to be careful not to lean in anything that's wet. I'm always careful of that part of my hand when I'm painting. There we go, this one's coming up nice and high right up here. stuff going on in there. Now we're going to dry it again and then we're going to start using pencils on it and pastels. No more paint, I don't think. I don't think there will be. So dry it again. Dry the chimney pots and the trees. And the tree. Thank 
dry. Okay. Now we're going to start picking out things. Okay, we're going to pick out windows. Little bits of light on the side of that tree. For the side of that tree, I'm going to use an orange pencil. Okay, and I'm just going to check that how dry that is. It's all right. And I'm just going to pick out light on that outer edge. And it's basically a controlled scribble. Look at that. You just scribble on it very lightly, giving the impression of a little bit of light on those leaves being picked out. Like that. See that? Don't do too much in that area, you can just dot the odd one in, but most of it's on that outer edge. Like that. And it's all a controlled swivel. Like that. Okay, there's probably enough on that tree. There we go. Now on the side of that chimney pot, I'm going to bring a little bit of light down the side there and there. A little bit on the on there and a little bit. It's a bit wet that chimney, so it's not working too well on that it'll be fine. On the rooftop there. A little bit of light shining. Now on the rooftops, when I do a little bit of light, I'm sort of going that way with it because you get tiles and they run in, they run in rows. So I'm, I'm giving it that kind of look as I'm putting the light on. I'm not going all the way across because this is only little bits of light being picked out here and there. I don't want to do all, that, all the way across, otherwise we'll end up with something that looks quite light <coughs> everywhere in our picture. We want it to look quite night time almost, and that's very, very getting quite late, it's a, probably about, if it's a summer picture, it might be about half past nine, that kind of time, you know, it's getting quite late, if it's a winter picture, it might only be about half past four, four o'clock, okay, but I know we've got leaves in our tree, but not all trees lose their, lose their leaves, do they? Now, around the side here, a little bit of light, light there, on the side of the chimney here, just coming down the side there, just picking out a little bit of light. I didn't do any there, did I? And that's because maybe the chimney is, is leaving a shadow on there so you wouldn't get much light coming through there. Now, under, under roof lines, you always get a shadow, so I'm going to avoid that area there. I'm going to just bring a little bit of light down the side of the house there and just show a little bit of brickwork getting lit on the side, just through there. And then suddenly, we have a brick wall. We're going to have a brick wall through here. So I'm just going to pick top of the wall out, like that. I'm just going to turn there, and it's got a little bit of light on the side there. So we can start to just pick out these things that are going on in our picture, like that. Not too much light on it. Getting light from above, I'm rubbing that as well a little bit. It doesn't smudge much because it's a pencil, but it does a bit, and it's just enough. There we go, so we've got that picked out. Now we have another house over here, so I'm going to put some light on there. Didn't do it. Pots on that one, but it's fine, not all do. And a little bit of light on that roof, on that side of the chimney, a little bit here, like so, coming down, leave a little gap there, and then down the side of the wall, stuff like that. On this roof, a little bit of light, down the side of the wall, a little bit on the chimney. This one, Quite strong, like that. Light coming down the side of the chimney, like that. And on the roof, a little bit that side as well. Okay, and then we're going to have a little bit, leave a gap, and then a little bit more there. Coming down that side. Street, isn't it? It's got lots of little houses and stuff dotted about. Now we're going to put some windows in. Okay, I'm just going to show a little bit of the roof line there, just picking out the light there on that roof line. Now windows, um, I'm going to put those in now. So I'm going to just draw them in lightly with this orange pencil. Now I'm going to put a window here, about there like that, and another one over there. 
since they're upstairs windows, try and get them the same size and on the same line, so it looks like the, the builder was good, like that. And we'll have a window here, like that. Maybe another one just there, creeping around the side of that building, just there. Another one up here, very small this one, because obviously that's uh, the house that's further away. And on this one, we'll go with a biggish window around about here. Now, we're going to paint those in. No, we're not. We're not going to paint them in at all. I'm going to use pastel, and then we're going to pick out the frames. So we want them to look like there's, there's lights on, okay? So we're going to put lights on in the windows, um, and I'm going to use this creamy yellow chalk. No, I'm not going to use a pastel for this, because I think it will go over the paint better. This is like a, a, it's like a creamy yellow. It's like a wheaty colour, a light sort of wheaty colour, like an ochre. And then orange as well, and I'm going to start with orange in here, so I'm just going to put this in, colouring in this window, like that, oh, a bit of in. I'm surprised that I like. and then a little bit of this going in with it, like that, and then another one on this one, I'm using the two colours together, so I'm using that one there, and then a bit of a shape of a window. If it's not very neat, don't worry, I'm going to show you how you fix that in there. Orange in these windows further back here. One in there. And then orange up there. And a little bit of that yellow. Going in there. Now to straighten up those, make them look neat. You take your brush, wash it out thoroughly, wipe it off, like that, but wipe it so it's just a little bit damp. And you've got a nice flat edge on there now, and it's just a little bit damp. And I can just straighten up the window shapes by wiping off every time there's a wipe there. So all that spilt pastel that went over the edge, you can take off. I'm not too worried about ones that are further away because obviously they're far away and it doesn't matter if they're not too perfect. But that one there, and that one there, just tidy those up. Now very carefully, get your little finger, give it a little wipe, I should have done this first really, give it a little wipe, I'm not going to go close to the edge now, just give them a little wipe like that, blow off the excess. Now we've got to make them look like they've got window frames. And we're going to do that, you could do it two ways. You could either use a black pencil, and pick up, I'm going to show you both ways. Now decide what sort of windows your house has got. This house is going to have windows that have a centre bar like that. And then Some windows have six, some have four. This one's going to have six. I'm going to do that and that. Okay, so there it is. There's a little window down in there. And this one's the same because it's the same house, so we'd have the same style of windows, wouldn't they? Just tidy that up a bit. I'm putting a little curve on that. I do things as I'm going along. And then down the centre, and then put your one there. These ones I'm just going to do one, two, one, two, like that. And this one, just going to cut the line in it like that. This one, I'm just going to edge it a bit first. One down there, and then another one there, and another one there. Now, sometimes people have curtains, don't they? So you could put very softly, you could just show a bit of curtain with a pencil. I will 
wouldn't use any colour. Just use the black paints generally like that to just show a bit of a curtain down here. Some people have blinds. They have those slatted blinds, don't they? So you could show that. Like that. One's got a slatted blind in that window. But in this window, we've got a curtain. This one, nothing. I won't show anything now, it's too far away anyway. I've got that one down there, so I'll quickly put that in. Like that, there's the top of the wall there anyway, so you can't see the bottom half, and then I'm just going to go with that. And you're just seeing the top of the window there, like that. Okay, now we're going to bring some other things in. We're going to bring some bushes and things like that in. So we're just going to use an orange pastel. And this, behind this wall, someone's grown a lovely little, little tree growing up there or something, or a bush or something. And just show some light in it like that. Rub it in. Like that. We're going to do something else to it in a minute. Make it look more leafy. Another tree. There. Like that. Rub that in. So some bushes down here. those is again a small brush with a little bit of water on it and then you're just going to speckle through the pastel so it looks like it's, it's leafy rather than dead smooth put light on it and just pick out these little bits like that and on this one Too smoky, wouldn't it? It looks too smoky and you lose the um, definition. Okay, so there's some bushes and stuff growing there. Now I'm going to have some uh, smoke coming out this chimney and I'm going to use what colour should I use for that? I reckon sort of a uh, sort of a darkish colour. I'm going to use this blue initially, this dark blue, and then I'm going to put other colours with it. So I'm just going to do some smoke coming out. I'm not going to overdo it. Just a nice, soft glow of smoke coming out of the chimney. Rub that in, like that. And give it that feel of smoke, like that. They were a bit chilly in that house, so they put their fire on. And I'm going to put a little bit of light with it. So I'm going to do this with a black pencil and it's going to be coming up through here nice and straight like that, don't worry about that. You can put paper over that if you like but I can, I can always fix it afterwards. And then a little bit thicker like this and we're going to have a little top on them light inside it because it's the light. The light is on. So we're going to put that in it. And then around it we can just do this. And just gently rub that in. Maybe a bit more light coming down onto the stuff that's below it, onto that wall there. Now, what else can we add? 
add to that? There's quite a lot in there already, isn't there? I think that's probably enough. We could put a couple of birds in maybe up in the sky. Um, just more quite simply like this, the curved over. to do for that picture so I'm going to call it done. Um, I hope I'll tell you what actually it doesn't need a little bit more right there inside that house there. I'll just get it off the street light and just drag that through. That's a little bit of light pastel I've used on that. And maybe a little bit on that roof and down the side there. And it's catching more light than the street light. I hope you've enjoyed watching that. Oh, got to do the frame test. Thank you for reminding me, Alan. Here's the framing test. There it goes. Are you ready? We do this all the time in our club. And on that goes. Like that. There we are. Nice picture, nice urban sunset with houses and trees and birds and street lights and all sorts going on in there. So, how long did that take? About 45 minutes. Okay? So that just shows you what you can do, doesn't it? But there we go. I hope you enjoyed it and um, look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm going to do some other tutorials, but they won't always be live. I only really do the live ones at 2 o'clock on a Thursday. But I do do other tutorials where I'm either painting and just keeping the, the camera in one position on what I'm doing. Or sometimes I'll do a painting and then just put it onto Facebook sped up so you can watch it happen quite quickly. With, that, with just music and you can watch those and pause them and then you can see each step so even though they're time lapsed and they're speeding along you can still pause it at each stage and see how your painting can develop that way um, so there's all sorts of ways I do these and I'm going to do some sketches some sort of drawings um, for children that don't have any paints as well and some other bits and pieces so keep watching um, I hope you're enjoying them I'd love to get some feedback to hear if you are enjoying these and I'll keep doing them uh, but for now though, I'll see you very soon, so take care of you. Bye bye.